Welcome to Turgrid Terror. As far as our opening game goes, we've got... Well... I think we can keep on this. We've got Bitter Blossom, which is going to help us out with some of our sacrifice effects, but we don't really have any card drawing sort of... Planeswalker. Yeah, I think... I'm okay with shipping this one back. Let's be aggressive on this one. So let's go on Mulligan. And yes, we'll keep on this one. We've got some spot removal. we got sacrifice. We have a born wipe, toxic deluge. And I think at this point, since we do have signing blood, let's go and put command beacon on the bottom. I know it's a little bit risky, but I think we can hit our land drops with that uh, sign of blood. So let's go and click OK. And our opponent's on the play. So, and also, I think it's Jorn, God of Winter. So this should be a pretty fun matchup. Um, let's go and cover our commanders. I'll kind of jump into what we've got going on with the game. Um, we are playing Turgrid, God of Fright. A menace. Whenever an opponent sacrifices a non-token permanent or discards a permanent card, you may put that card from a graveyard onto the battlefield under your control. And also on the back end, uh, Turgrid's Lantern. Um, target player loses three life unless they sacrifice a non-land permanent or discard a card. Then for a four-man activation, untap Turgrid's Lantern. Also, we're playing it slow player one. So um, if you saw that weird pause for a second, I was talking to them in the chat. So I'm um, just going to lead off with Swamp and then anything else, kick it back over there. Um, Plague is Jorn, God of Winter. Whenever Jorn attacks, untap each snow permanent that you control. Then tap uh, on the back end. With the uh, Rhyme Staff, uh, you may play target snow permanent from your graveyard this turn. If you do, it enters the battlefield tap. So, there we go. I'm excited to see our opponent's uh, build of uh, of Jorn. And I'll kind of talk about that once we get... Uh, let's go for Sign in Blood first. Definitely want to target ourselves with this. Draw two cards, lose two life, which we are perfectly fine with. And that is going to be Arcane Signet and another Swamp. So, um, kick it back over there. Um, but yeah, if you don't know, Slow Player One, um, definitely friend of the channel. They always have some really fun builds. It's kind of one of those, I just always enjoy playing against them. They have these really unique builds, different things like that. And one of the commanders that I'm definitely interested in, but I haven't even thought about building yet, is Jorn. Just because simply I'm just not entirely sure where I want to take it. Um, sometimes I just like to kind of see it in action, so I'm really excited to see our opponent's build of it um, because I know they make some pretty good stuff. So, all right, so we've got Ice Fang swinging across for one that's going to drop us down to 27, and then we'll see what we draw into. If not, we're looking at an Arcane Signet turn, which we are uh, perfectly fine with. Let's go and lead off with Swamp. We can actually hold on to Herbboard just for a little bit because our opponent only has one Black Source, so I'm okay with that. Um, let's go for Arcane Signet that's going to be 1 2, and then anything else. Pass it over to the God of Winter. Um, let's give a quick shout out to our sponsors, TCG Player. If you go to bid.ly slash joltmtg, that's going to apply my affiliate link and also allow you to get some of the new cards from the new set. And if you use it, hey, much obliged. I appreciate it. Also, let's give a quick shout out to MTGO Traders. If you're in the market for some brand new cards for the brand new set online, uh, they have you covered. Also, let's give a quick shout out to ingaming.com. If you go to ingaming.com slash jolt, um, that is going to give you 10% off of your order. And... Uh, if you're looking for gaming accessories, no propane accessories. If you go there, they don't have them. And last but not least, I started a Patreon. So if you'd like to directly support cool content like this, um, there's a link down in the description below. But if you're keeping score at home, it is officially free time. And draw time, uh, Chrome Mox. Okay, we can take that. Um, let's lead off with Swamp. And so at this point, if we didn't just kind of hitting the reset button with Toxic Deluge, I think I'm kind of okay with that. We can go for Turgrid and start sacrificing stuff. Yeah, let's give that a shot. We're sitting at five. And if they've got spot removal, they've got it. We're going to be able to bounce back from this. So let's go for Turgrid. Um, this is definitely one of those commanders that you want to be aggressive uh, with getting her down. And so uh, just because she has just such a huge impact on the battlefield, you know, being able to go for Fleshbag Marauder and get at least Ice Fang if they sacrifice it, get Ice Fang on our side of the battlefield. And then when you get any other sort of compounding sacrifice effect or discard effect, um, it's pretty nutty. <laughs> we just played a game before this, and it was kind of one of those Soul Ring games where it was just kind of went super quick like that. But um, Powered out Liliana, got the discard ability going, had some good sacrificing, and so uh, it's a lot of fun. That was kind of the first little test run I did with it, but I'm recording now, so hopefully we still have um, a pretty good game today. Now, as far as the actual build of the deck itself, I opted not to go for kind of like that 8-rack style uh, build, where we have just a ton of Winter's Rest, 
Enters the battlefield. Tap enchanted creature. Doesn't untap. Okay, that's not the end of the world. And it's not one of those things that is going to take away her ability. That's one of those things like we're not trying to swing in. Um, at least we still have that ability active with the sacrifice and the discard. So I'm um, swinging it for four. That's going to drop us down to a 22. Oh, look at that. <laughs> Jordan getting that free mana. But yeah, we're not really going for that eight rack build where we're just having our opponent discard card after card each turn. Um, one of the things that I wanted to do in building this is still hit that discard element, but just kind of have more of a controlled element. And we'll talk about that here in a second. Let's get our turn going. Yeah, I think at this point, to hit the reset button on Jorn, kind of like that. So what we can do... Yeah, I think it might just be better if we just Toxic on this one. So, um, let's lead off with Swamp. Let's go for Toxic Day. There's just going to be one, two, three. And then let's go ahead and pay three life on this. There we go. Click OK. I almost clicked OK on two. I'm glad we didn't. It's going to clear the board out. And then uh, anything else. Yeah, we kind of want Murderous Rider and Flashback. So, we don't really have to go for Chrome Mox just yet. So, um, kick it back over there. Uh, but yeah, as far as the discard, I basically didn't want to take this deck into kind of like a random discard style or operation, whatever you want to call it. And so, we're going to have a little bit more of a focused discard. And you can definitely do this in 1v1. You can definitely do this in multiplayer. You know, whoever's at the strongest at the table, it's still that same gameplay strategy. So, you can target them with some of your spells. So, instead of going for those just target player dumps X cards into the graveyard, I um, kind of went a little bit heavier than I normally do with hand disruption. So, we've got Despise in here. and um, We've got Thought Seize. Um, we have... Basically, if it's a discard spell, it's going to have some sort of way to interact with some sort of non-land card in their hand. Because one of the cool things about Turgrid is that, you know, it's nice just to get random creatures on the battlefield. And that will happen. Um, there's going to be times where you just hit that mana. But um, being able to just grab their late game threat and have it come on your side of the battlefield. Or let's say you grab one of their planeswalkers or something like that. Um, having that option to be very selective in what you get on your side is Pretty much where I wanted to take the deck because it's going to help you close the game out. So, all right, so we've got Necromancer on the battlefield. I wish this was legendary. Look how cool that art is. Gosh, <laughs> love that art. And so we'll take, we'll give that a read here in just a second. So we'll see what we're drawing to for the turn. Just looking for something other than a land. Torment of Hellfire. Well, we will certainly take that. So let's lead off with Swamp. So with Necromancer, if a non-token creature an opponent controls would die, exile that card with an ice counter on it, then you may cast spells among cards um, among cards and exile your opponent's own with ice counters on them, spin that from snow sources if there were any color. So, yeah, basically just kind of like that Kali Tess effect. Yeah, I think we're cool with Fleshback Marauder. Well, actually, because we don't want that exile effect with Necromancer, so actually we need to go Murderous Rider. So let's cast um, Swift in on uh, Necromancer. It's going to be one, two, three. Yeah, because if we go for the Sacrifice effect, it's actually going to cut off uh, Targrid's ability. And then we can actually go and cast Murderous Rider. It's going to be one, two, three. Yeah, that'll work out. Um, another thing that you do want to incorporate in your deck with Targrid is that you're running a lot of Sacrifice effects. Um, you want to have some sort of just kind of extra creatures on the battlefield. There's going to be a lot of times where, you know, you can just sacrifice Fleshback Marauder to its own ability. But let's say you're drawing a lot of sacrificing spells. You're trying to set up something kind of on your turn. Um, just kind of having these two-for-one creatures like Murderous Rider is going to make it to where, you know, if you and your opponents have to sacrifice, it's really going to help you out having some something that you've already gotten a little bit of value from. But yes, as far as the hand disruption, going for that, just basically just going for, like, hand-selected Hand disruption, which is pretty nice. I'm um, also running Pithing Needle in Sorcerer's Spyglass in here. If you're going to build Turgrid, definitely auto include both of those in there. Um, I played against Turgrid the other day, and we just had Homer Path. So <laughs> the, they did all this Turgrid stuff, and then we just end of turn Homer Path. So and that can work out to your disadvantage because it's I don't think it's a May ability with Turgrid. Oh, no, it is. You may, but um. But yeah, that's something that if you're playing Turgrid and you want to make sure that they don't gain control of their stuff, run some sort of, you know, lockout effect like that to make sure that does stick around. All right, so we've got Frexy and Snow Crusher over there, and I love Juggernaut, so that sounds like a pretty good option for Fleshbag. Um, let's go Fleshbag Marauder. One, two, three. Oh, yeah. 
<laughs> not love juggernauts. I don't know why. They're, they're just one of the best creature types out there. Um, let's go and sacrifice flesh bag. Um, that's going to go to the graveyard. Definitely want to use Turgrid's ability. Yes, we will definitely use that. Um, let's go and push in with Murderous Rider. There we go. Swinging it for two. That's going to knock him down to 28. And I think Murderous Rider has lifelink. Yes, it does. We'll take that. All right, so going to drop them down to 28. And then lane drop for the turn. That's going to be Urborg. Yeah, still going to hold on to Chrome Mox. So anything else past the turn. But yeah, outside of kind of having these extra creatures on the battlefield, um, we are running a lot of uh, sacrifice effects in here. It just works out really well. You know, you're playing mono black, so you want to have access to a lot of removal. But being able to have just all these different sacrifices effects, and you do want to diversify your sacrifice effects. Like, you know, if it's all sorcery speed or if it's all creatures, you're really not going to be able to catch your opponent off guard. So you always want to make sure you have something that you can either, you know, cast or, you know, like something like Vana's Hunger. Whatever sort of sacrifice spells you're running, um, do make sure that you have some sort of, you know, mix of creatures, instant, and sorcery. So it just gives you a lot of uh, versatility in your game plan. Um, and also, the other package, you know, so basically, you know, you can always run this tailored hand disruption in your deck. But the other p package that we're running in here, besides kind of like the Mine Rot style stuff, is we are running the Liliana discard ability. Um, let's actually take a quick look at this. So return target permanent to its owner's hand. Activate this ability only if you control four or more snow permanents. And then that is going to be an elk that we can't see. Okay, so that's a 4-4. Four, four. So we do have go for the throat. But I think that'll go back to a 2-2. Two, two. Yeah, that will. So let's see what we draw into for the turn. Unfortunately, do not hit a sacrifice effect. Let's go for deserted temple. And so we're looking at a 3-3. Three, three. Yeah, we have got to go for Go for the Throat on this one. So let's do that. Let's go for Go for the Throat. That's going to be Zerted Temple. Tap down for Black. And you still want to run regular spot removal in here because there's going to be many times where you need it. And Frexy and Snow Crusher. Yeah, we're just going to go and get that going into the red zone. I like it. I was just making sure there wasn't some sort of drawback. So let's go and swing in for a 2 3 and for a 6 5. Um, we've got a pretty good chunk of damage swinging across at our opponent. And um, we might be able to swing in next turn. Um, that's going to be 8 coming across, so that's going to put them down to 20, and that'll be 12, and then we've got ourselves set up for semi-decent Torment of Hellfire, so we'll see what they can assemble on their side of the battlefield. Uh, but yeah, as far as the Planeswalkers, we're running a Tevesh in here. Um, Tevesh is going to give us that option of, you know, if we can get it to that ultimate to like gain control of all of the commanders, why not? Uh, but for the most part, Tevesh is in here because we're going to be able to create those Thrall tokens. And once again, that's going to help with the uh, sacrifice effects that we're running in here. And um, we're also running Liliana the Vest, Obnixilis, um, two of the other Lilianas, the Liliana of the Dark Realms and Liliana Waker of the Dead. I think that's, I'm trying to look at my second screen. But basically, it's one where it's target player discards a card. Um, one of the cool things about. You know, running a mix of Planeswalkers that discard and hand disruption, or at least kind of tailored hand disruption, is that by getting these Planeswalkers on the battlefield, you're forcing your opponent to, you know, let's say that you don't have that spot removal, or you don't have that hand disruption in your hand, um, but you do have some sort of sacrifice effect, but maybe they're holding on to it because they don't want you to have it just yet. Uh, but by being able to run these different, you know, kind of Planeswalker packages in here, um, you're basically going to force them to get something on the battlefield to deal with those Planeswalkers. So um, that's going to free it up to where you can go for some of those sacrifice effects. All right, so we do have uh, Jorn coming in as the uh, the called ring. It, yeah, man, I love this. Yeah, as far as Jorn, like, I love Sultai. And when this card was spoiled, it's definitely one of those commanders where I'm like, okay, I need to sit on that for a little bit because it's such a flavorful build. And, you know, there's not a ton of snow permanents out there. But, um, I don't know. I'm, I'm enjoying what I'm seeing from our opponent so far. This is, seems like a pretty fun match. Um, so we're looking at a 4-4. Four, four. Yeah, we can still swing in next turn, because that's going to be a 2-2. Two, two. And, and if they... Okay, they do not shock that in. Okay, so we'll see what we draw into for the turn. Yeah, okay, they're going to swing in for a 4-4. Four, four. I think we can actually swing in and maybe jam a Torment of Hellfire? And that might seal the deal? We'll see. But yeah, other than the Planeswalkers, it's just uh, mono black removal. <laughs> and Turgrid is, man, if you've not played uh, Turgrid or seen it or played against it, it is, it can get out of hand pretty quick sometimes. So, all right, so we're looking at Playcrafter. So we're going to be able to swing in for eight. That drops him down to 12. And uh, we're going to have Torment of Hellfire for uh, seven. 
potentially eight if we exile Plague Crafter. That's going to be one, two, three, four. Yeah, I kind of like doing that. Um, let, let's do that. So let's go Chrome Mox. And we're going to exile a Plague Crafter. Let's go and swing in with uh, for eight across. Man, I wish we were running Snow Basics in here <laughs> for that Frexian Snow Crusher. I'd love that. But yeah, as far as uh, me building Jorn, it's definitely on my to-do list. I just want to uh, settle into something that's going to be fun. So let's go and swing across for eight. That's going to drop them down to uh, 12. And we'll see if we can't get this Torment of Hellfire to stick. I, I think this sounds like a pretty good plan. Okay, so that's going to be Torment of Hellfire for eight. So they do have four cards in the hand. Um, they do have two creatures on the battlefield. Oh, there we go. The art popped up. Very nice. Oh, look at that. That, that is a very nice looking elk right there. Uh, we can get that elk to come across and maybe Turgrid can ride it. All right, it looks like our opponent might. Okay, so they're going to pop all the uh, way. There they go. They're going to pop all the way down to zero. <laughs> Good game to our opponent. Yeah, unfortunately with Turgrid um, in the 1v1 nature, um, having hand disruption in 1v1 is a pretty powerful effect, especially when you're running a lot of sacrifice style effects. So, um, we're definitely going to play a lot of Turgrid, but we'll see when we're going to get it out there. But as far as our opponent's build of Jorn, if you're looking for a uh, build of Jorn, uh, we saw some pretty good stuff over there. You know, we got to run Frexian Snow Crusher on our side, uh, which is always a good feeling, but um, definitely going to get the creative juices flowing. But anyways, if you enjoyed the video, hey, like and subscribe. Thanks. Bye.